Hello and welcome to the session on functions. This is brought to you by Handa Gafanda. Normally, we are given the independent variable and we are asked for the value of the dependent variable. But what are we going to do if it is the other way around? In that case, we'll need to have a look at the inverse function. Let's see how. Suppose the function given to me is x plus 2. So whatever is the value of the independent variable, I will add 2 to it and then get the dependent variable. However, what, how will I do it the other way around? Suppose I am given the dependent variable and I have to find out the independent variable. Since here it was plus 2, it will become minus 2. If it fx was 10x, then f inverse of x will be x by 10 because here I am multiplying by 10, reverse of it would be dividing by 10. Let us look at something a little more complicated say 5x plus 7 then in the inverse function 7 will be subtracted also since it is being multiplied with 5 it will be divided by 5 we can these were the simple ones so we could just look at them and say what the answer was but can you just look at it and say what the answer is it's a little difficult so that is the reason we need to follow a procedure for it the procedure would be I will replace fx with y and now my equation becomes y is equal to 3x plus 2 by 3x plus 5. What I need is, what I am given is y in terms of x. What I need is x in terms of y. Let's try and find that out. The equation would become 3xy plus 5y is x plus 2. Which will translate to, if I take it to the other side, this becomes 5y minus 2 is x minus 3xy or x can be taken common I will be left with 1 minus 3y is equal to 5y minus 2 so the value of x is 5y minus 2 divided by 1 minus 3y which tells me that my inverse function is effectively wherever I have x I will replace it with f inverse of x and wherever I have y I will replace it with x so I will get 5x minus 2 by 1 minus 3x. This is my inverse function. A couple of other inverse functions would be, let's say for example, if fx is log x, f inverse of x will be 10 to the power of x. Another point that I like to add, as you can see from this case, is that it is not necessary that an inverse function will always exist. For example, if fx is equal to x squared, in this case, f inverse function of x does not exist. Why so? Because f inverse of x ideally root x but that is wrong. Why is it wrong? Because if I put x is equal to 9 here, f inverse of x can be 3 or minus 3. I cannot obtain two values in case of a function and that is why this would have been wrong. Suppose I am given a function fx, then I am trying to find out its maxima and minima. How will I do that? First of all, I will find out, I will differentiate it and obtain the value of f dash x. That is the first differential of the function. I will equate it to 0. Once I equate it to 0, I will write down all the roots of the equation, which may be 1, may be 2 or may be n. All these points are the points at which a maxima or a minima occurs. How am I going to find that out whether it is a maxima or a minima? For that, I will need to find out f double dash x or double differential of the function if and then keep on putting the roots say I put in the root x1 and it comes out as a positive value that means x1 is the point at which a minima occurs when I put x2 it comes out as a negative value that means x2 is the point at which the maxima occurs but are these the minimum or the maximum values no x1 is the point at which the minima occurs but to find out the minimum value of the function that is going to be f of x1 very similarly x2 is the point at which the maxima occurs to find out the maximum value I will have to do f of x2 please do note that that these minimum value and maximum value are different from the global minima or the global maxima what I am going to do is suppose I got 10 roots then there will be 5 maximas and 5 minimas is it necessary? Yes. Because between any two minimas, there should be a maxima. Between any two maximas, there should be a minima. I will find out all the minimum values by putting them in. 
and I'll find out all the maximum values by putting them in the original function. The biggest of those values is going to be my global maxima. The minimum of those values is going to be my global minima. Another point to note is infinite plus infinite or minus infinite when they do exist are not the global minimas or the global maxima. For example, if my function is fx is equal to x square, this function will have a minimum value, it will have a global minima, but it does not have a global maxima. Something contradictory to it, say minus x square, this particular function will have a global maxima, it will have a maximum value, but it will not have a minimum value, because as you can see, you come increasing the values of x, will get to minus infinity. That wraps up the session on functions. Please stay tuned at Handa Ka Funda to watch other videos on other chapters. Thank you.